have you been looking at cutting your own steaks in house whether that is to save money on your menus at your restaurant or at your home when you're going to the supermarket it is an amazing way to save money these are amazing cuts. As you can see here, this is what we're learning to break down. These are from my friends at Greater Omaha. These are Hereford steaks, meaning those nice, big, beautiful red ones, not the giant black ones. Those are Angus. Look at these two beautiful tenderloins. Again, these are from Greater Omaha. These are coming in, packaged in nice and beautifully. These came in at about $18 a pound. And they are totally worth it. So we're going to weigh them out to start with uh, just so I can get a weight. So one weight is 6.4 pounds on this one tenderloin. And we're going to start breaking this bad boy down. So we're saving all of our waste off to the side. That is going to allow us to see what our waste percentages is because we want to have our waste above 55%. So that lets us know that whether or not we got a good yield. So we're going to start breaking off this side chain and breaking off that piece. That is full of sinew and just kind of ugly bits. We're going to save this off to the side. This is not total scrap. This is something that we're going to come back and work with. And you'll see here in just a little bit. And it's not a throwaway piece. A lot of people fail when they throw this piece away. There is still plenty of red meat in there. You just got to kind of work with it, know what you're doing a couple times, and it will save you money. Some of the best kebab meat I have comes out of that little chunk right there. So now we're going to start pulling the silver skin. And so you'll start from the top, you'll make a little slit, and then you pull towards the head of the tenderloin. So you just kind of keep doing that strips. If you do it the opposite direction, it will actually end up ripping the meat. So please don't do that. So again, making little cuts keep pulling down towards the tenderloin and again i'm not going to necessarily speed this up i want you guys to see the whole process i feel like if i speed it up you might miss a detail or something that you're going to miss so if you need to feel free to skip through and get to the part that you need so flipping it over again kind of give you a new angle of what i'm doing making a slit on the end pulling it right towards the end of the tenderloin so these Hereford steaks, again, uh, being a Hereford steak, there's those nice, big, beautiful, reddish, brown, and white cows. They are absolutely delicious. They build their meat very differently in flavor. They're very flavorful, and they just they they eat different. They act different than the Angus. So you kind of get almost like a complete new species of cow when it comes to flavor. I highly recommend if you've never had a chance to check out a Hereford steak, you probably are missing out. It's super tender. It's very delicious. So we're flipping it over to the other side and right up on the top of that head there, you've got this silver skin that goes down the back there. We're wanting to get that out of there. Kind of, again, doing the same thing, working it towards the top of the head. That, none of that that I'm pulling off right there is really usable at all. It is filled with silver skin and all of that is pretty much inedible. And so we're just kind of working that piece away. We're not going to be 100% perfect. Not all fat on a tenderloin is bad. I think there's going to be some people here who disagree with me. They seem to disagree with every time I post a meat video. But there is good fat, and then there's bad fat on a steak. So if you see a little piece of fat on a steak, I don't really want to hear about it. We're going to do what we can to get the silver skin off. But I actually leave. I don't mind leaving a little bit of fat on there. And I'm going to basically shave it down to where I have mostly, like, true muscular fat that's on there and not that silver skin so you kind of see me shaving down that little nasty clump there that's from uh, them cutting the tenderloin sometimes you can get some of those pieces into maybe a kebab but this round not so much so now we're kind of taking a look at this tenderloin making a cut on the end and giving it away we are weighing to eight ounces and I believe the only one that I was off was one, and it was about a 7.5, which kind of technically probably could pull off an 8-ounce on it. I don't think nobody's going to tell the difference in a half of an ounce. But uh, all of those, though, I try to range them within uh, 4 ounces on either side. So as a restaurant, we give ourselves a 0.4-ounce uh, variance, and so that kind of helps us lock that in. So we're getting close to the head, and we're getting done with what – a lot of restaurants would call the barrel cuts or those center cuts. So a little bit of fat there. Good look. See, I'm trimming it out. I don't want to hear any complaining from folks. And all that fat that you see there, that that fat is going to break down once we cook. All that fat's going to break down and just make a very moist tenderloin. Making an incision there and cutting off the end. 
get hit that wonderful eight ounce, maybe a little over, give a little cut. Again, that's just kebab meat. No worries. No worries. And then I know I've got about a, a 12 ounce chunk there on the end. So I'm going to weigh it out, see where I'm out, cut four ounces off. Once you get to that head, always just kind of give it a, a good check and just kind of see what you got left. That's a key thing there. So I'm going to weigh them all up. So let's give these fillets away. These are, I got eight eight ounce fillets, an average of eight ounce fillets. And super excited about that. So that gave me a yield of 3.9 pounds just out of those barrel cuts. So 3.9 divided by original weight, 6.4 pounds, gives us a 61% yield, meaning we did awesome at butchering down those barrel cuts. Now we're gonna start working down all of those odd bits. So, Chef, why should I care about these odd bits? Why shouldn't I just throw it in the trash and be done with it? Essentially, what I'm doing here is saving myself $22.14. I'm going to yield 1.23 pounds of this kebab meat. It could be for beef tips and rice. You could throw it into chili. You could do lots of different things with it. I like to throw them on skewers and grill them off or throw them into beef tips and rice for the employee meal. Just an absolutely delicious bit of steak that otherwise would just be going through the trash. For restaurants, that's, this is a money saver right here. This is how you kind of work that back into your budget. I don't build that back into the cost, but overall, I'm going to end up yielding off of this tenderloin a total of 80% yield. I am saving bukus of money by just being patient and working through it. So this piece right here is kind of the harder piece and you'll see all of that silver skin. And that, that silver skin and that muscular uh, sinew, it intertwines into this meat. So it kind of takes a couple times going through it and practicing with it. And essentially what you're going to do is kind of cut it into two pieces, which you'll kind of see there. It really doesn't kind of naturally split. And then you'll be able to kind of run your knife up underneath it and save yourself a little bit of time. So I'm laying it flat, keeping that silver skin flat, and then running my sharp knife across it. Again, note which fillet knife that I'm using. It's a, it's a fillet knife, not a giant chef's knife. It's very important that you've got the perfect knife to kind of fit into those little bits, and you're kind of able to carve that out without carving up all the meat. All of your bit of red meat that you put over in the waste bucket is wasted dollars because you pay for everything that goes into the trash. That includes the wrapping. That includes the juices that are inside. So you don't want to have a lot of waste going into that trash. So, again, I'm willing to save my time up so I can do this right here. Look how beautiful that is. Nice, big, beautiful tenderloin. You can see all the meat that I harvest off of its other tenderloin. Again, that's eight tenderloins, 1.23 pounds of beef tips and rice, and you'll see this other seven-pound filet uh, tenderloin right beside it. I hope you enjoy this again. I think this is, it is a great way that we could be saving money for our household or our restaurant. If you are missing out, make sure that you go over and you check out my ribeye cutting. Again, it's of a certified Hereford steak, and it was an absolutely fun time. I love working with different steak cuts and seeing different things. A lot of hype is on Angus, and Angus is a great cut of steak. If you've not had a chance yet, check out Hereford. It's, it's just a completely different mouthfeel. It's almost like there's au jus built into the steaks. I love it. And we're going to be doing a deep dive on steaks and uh, the cow breeds coming up soon so you can know the different types of cows to be looking out for and what each of them mean when it comes to flavor profile, toughness, mouth texture, etc. And we are super excited. But guys, I got to rough it out and uh, I got to grill off these steaks. So y'all have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.